I've got a brand new mic microwave? I've got a brand new microphone, and for some reason, it's really quiet. I've also noticed in my script I've written quiet instead of quiet, so cracking start. I've turned up the volume, and I'm holding it right next to my mouth, so lord knows why I can't get it any louder, but never mind. Apologies about that, and make sure you turn down your volume after watching this, or the next thing you'll listen to will deafen you. 1901 and 1902 Gordon Bennett Cup. Let's go. Because France won in 1900, they again would be the hosts. 29th of May 1901 was the day of the second Gordon Bennett Cup race, which ran alongside an open race to ensure a large number of entries. The rules were the same as the first race, and the route chosen by the ACF was Paris to Bordeaux, with a total distance of 555 kilometres. Initially, three nations sought to enter the race, the French hosts, naturally, the Germans and the British. The Germans awarded two places for Mercedes, following their victory in the Nice Salon Nice race, with the final place to be competed for by Bentz and Canelo Durkop in the ominously named Elimination Trial. Neither ended up showing for the Elimination Trial, meaning Germany would only enter the two Mercedes. However, 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 both cars ended up being sold before the race, and there was not enough time to build any more, resulting in Germany having to withdraw from the event altogether. His Majesty's United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland had entered just the one car, which was a Napier, due to be driven by Selwyn Edge. However, Edge wasn't entirely convinced with his British Dunlop tyres, and opted to replace them for a foreign manufacturer's. According to the rules, every aspect of the car had to be from the country of the entry, meaning Edge was now ineligible for the Gordon Bennett Cup, and could only compete in the Paris-Bordeaux Open race. Let's remind ourselves of what the Horseless Age wrote about the 1900 race. The race was very badly organised, that insufficient preparations had been made, and that it must be looked upon as a failure. With Britain and Germany pulling out, this meant France were the only participating nation, so they had already won the cup before the race had even started. So if the first race was a failure, then the second was something of a disaster. The ACF announced that the three drivers, and only competing drivers, were Gerardo, Sharon, both in Panars, and Alfred Vellet, using the pseudonym Levey for some reason, in Amours. Sharon departed first, only to stop immediately to adjust his car, and LeVay took the lead. Sharon continued to have issues with his car, and ultimately had to retire at Vendôme, with valve problems, leaving just two, Gerardo and LeVay. Two became one, as LeVay hit a gutter, putting him out of the race, leaving just Gerardo, who unsurprisingly won the Golden Bennett Cup for France, and the ACF, when he arrived in Bordeaux after 8 hours, 50 minutes, and 59 seconds, as the only finisher. And we thought the 2005 US Grand Prix was a farce. And what is the reaction of the crowd? Well, it's stunned. Stunned silence. With this time, Gerardo averaged 63 kilometers per hour and saw him place only 10th in the overall Paris-Bordeaux race. The winner of that race was Henri Fournier in Amours, with a time roughly 2 hours and 40 minutes faster at 90 kilometers per hour. Fair to say, motor racing as an international competition hadn't got off to a great start. 26th of June, 1902, and there was hope for a third time lucky with the third Gordon Bennett Cup race. Again, the ACF and France hosted the event, but unlike previous races, the route wasn't entirely within the borders of France, as the route was Paris to Innsbruck in Austria. Just like in 1901, the Cup race was run alongside an open city-to-city -city race, which was Paris to Vienna. The plan was for the Cup race to also finish in Vienna, however, that would breach the rules due to the race distance being too long. So Innsbruck was chosen to be the finish instead, giving the total race distance of 565 kilometers. The distance between Paris and Innsbruck of course is much greater than this, but 312 kilometers of the distance went through Switzerland, where the race was neutralized and all cars drove to the speed limit as racing was banned in the country. So a modern day Grand Prix under virtual safety car if you will. This ban was due to the death of a child in the Paris-Berlin race the previous year, after he'd stepped into the road and was hit by one of the racers. Given the last two events were failures, there was little interest from other nations to enter the race. The dominant French entered their quota of three, and the only other entrants were the British, who also entered three. The French drivers were the 1901 Cup winner Girardo, Fournier, winner of the Paris-Bordeaux race, and Deneuve. The British drivers were Edge in a Napier, Arthur Callan, and Montague Graham White. Bonus point for the best name. 
There were some new rules for that year, with an increase in the maximum weight to one metric tonne, which all of the French cars embraced by going right up to the limit. The thinking of the time was, a heavier car was a faster car, as it had a bigger engine and therefore more powerful. Edge's Napier, however, was made to be under the weight limit, being only 933 kilograms. The race began at 3.30 in the morning, in a rally interval style, with the Gordon Bennett Cup setting off first, followed by the 219 cars for the Paris-Vienna race. The starting order was Girardo, Fournier, Edge and Deneuf, with both Graham White and Callan encountering problems, meaning they couldn't start on time. Girardo was first to retire due to a cracked fuel tank at Troyes, 140 kilometres into the race, while compatriot Fournier had an 80-minute lead at the town. His success was to be short-lived, as just before he reached Long, he had to retire with a clutch problem. It wasn't all bad for the French, as Deneuf was not only in the lead of the cup competitors, but also the hundreds in the race to Vienna. Second in the cup was Edge, who was an hour and three quarters behind. Graham White didn't arrive at the Belfort stop until 3.30 the following morning, and Kellen had to retire somewhere before Belfort. The second portion of the race was the 312 kilometres through Switzerland, where all competitors had to run at a 15 mile an hour speed limit. Despite the slow speeds, the drive was not smooth sailing due to poor road surface quality. Deniff's Panard had developed a crack on the casting of the differential, but he was able to continue. When competitive racing resumed in Austria, Deniff led Edge until his damaged differential eventually failed, with 40 kilometres left before Innsbruck. This meant Edge was the only runner left in the cup, and he arrived in Innsbruck with a total time of 11 hours, 2 minutes and 52.6 seconds, at an average speed of 51.14 km per hour, meaning a country other than France had won the cup for the first time. Edge carried on to Vienna to finish 11th overall in the race, which was won by Marcel Renault. Zero bonus points for guessing what make of car he was in. Six entrants and one finisher. I know what you're thinking, it's been another disappointment at best, and a disaster at worst for the Gordon Bennett Cup. Turns out this was a significant race and a turning point in the history of our beloved sport. The French were the automotive giants of the time, and had essentially invented the organised motoring event, and they had finally been beaten. This was an embarrassment for them, and suddenly the Gordon Bennett Cup was something to be talked about. The future cup races no longer needed to be held with other city-to-city races, as they were popular enough by themselves to draw in the crowds. Napier also saw their sales triple following their win, as did the export figures for British-made cars. The philosophy of what made a good racing car also changed. The Napier was lighter, less powerful but more reliable, which made manufacturers move away from the idea of just making as big an engine as possible to get the most power. Three cup races had been run by this stage, and there were three more to come. But as I said, they became much bigger events, and motor racing itself became increasingly more popular during these races. And I'll talk about these next time.